All right. For our topic, we did the effects of world salt on soil mineral composition. My name is Maya Liskey. My name is Cole Nowoski. And we did this project alongside Megan Blatty and Hannah Paulson, um, and also with the help and guidance of Dr. Joe Whitaker. All right, so for a little bit of background information, um, during the early 1920s, acidification of forest ecosystems increased steadily because of road salt. Um, this um, made um, a lot of states create laws in the 1980s to decrease the amount of acidifying atmospheric pollution. So to test the effects of road salt on soil mineral composition, we gathered 25 cups of soil from campus. Um, we sifted the soil to get rid of any large organic um, materials or bugs, stuff like that. We divided the soil into containers containing five cups of dirt each. Um, and then we tested each soil, each soil sample for initial pH, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus levels. Um, to test this, we mixed one cup of soil with five cups of DRO water, stirred it, and allowed it to sit for 30 minutes to let the uh, soil settle. After 30 minutes, each of the samples were tested again for pH, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus using the provided testing kits. Um, and then we applied um, different concentrations to each of the samples with road salt, the same road salt that Concordia Campus uses, alongside some water. On the control sample, we just used water. Uh, we then allowed the samples to sit for one week and then we tested and treated them again. So this is just an overview of the different concentrations of salt and RO water that we used um, for samples one through four. And then again, the control sample, we just used RO water. So the results of what we gathered from this, as you'll see on your screen right there, the pH strips starting at the bottom with the least acidic, so most basic, and then on the top would be your most acidic. Um, the, this also shows how the, the greater the amount of salt concentration that was put into the soil, the more acidic that it became. And on the bottom, the very bottom one would be our control sample. So these kits, as you can see right here, were the ones that we would use. Each one of these was filled with water to a, you can kind of see it in there, a, a dotted black line in the clear window, and each of them had a respective indicator powder that was put in there. Then both of these were shook vigorously in order to mix the soil, mix the water with the um, indicator solution. And then after sitting for approximately two minutes, we would record to the best of our ability what each color indicated. So overall, the, overall, what we had observed was decreases in nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus compared to the control sample, and then decreases in soil mineral composition due to the application of road salt resulted in possible foliage damage. Um, further determinable effects observed in soil with higher salt concentrations. Eco-friendly alternatives could include calcium, magnesium acetate and potassium acetate that do not produce harmful effects such as byproducts that could harm the soil. Although these are both more expensive, but the benefits outweigh the cost because we only have one planet. We can't really, we don't have any soil to grow food. We can't really survive. And then also at home options if those wouldn't be available to you are sand, beet juice, fire, ash, um, coffee grounds, pickle brine, cheese brine. But just remember that when you live in a state such as we do in northern Minnesota, some of these are, some of these are not too effective, given that the ambient temperature sometimes is like negative 45 outside before wind chill. All right, that's all we have. Thank you.